In this video, we're going to look at some properties of the discrete time complex exponential. Um, in particular, this one. And uh, the thing that I want to point out is that this is uh, periodic in both k and little n. So this is equal to e to the j 2 pi k plus m times capital N. And that's pretty easy to see because um, if we separate this into two exponentials, um, we see that uh, in the piece where this fact uh, distributes across and, uh, well, we could just write it, e to the j 2 pi k n over n and e to the j 2 pi m n times big N divided by n. This piece here is equal to 1, and so it hasn't changed the value. Why is it 1? It's because when we cancel these capital N's, this is e to the j 2 pi times an integer, and that's equal to the real number 1. Um, it's also, for the same reason, uh, periodic in the n index. So we have k n plus m capital N. Same, same exact uh, logic there. The other thing that we could do is we could say this is equal to e to the j 2 pi k n modulo capital N. Uh, what is a modulo operation? The modulo operation takes n, whatever the value is, and adds or subtracts multiples of n, capital N, until the sum is falls into the range 0 to capital N minus 1. Similarly, this is equal to e to the j 2 pi k mod n times little n. And, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, it, it's also equal to e to the j 2 pi k times n modulo capital N. And there's other versions of this that we could write down. But the important part for us is to note that uh, whenever we are um, looking at the derivation of transform pairs for the DFT and we see something other than k and n in these positions, we need to remember that uh, we, when we write down an expression, we have to write it down um, in terms of n mod n or perhaps k mod n. Um, Uh, let's take a look at an, of an, at an example where this actually happens. So um, let us suppose in this example that um, x of n has a transform, a DFT, and it's an endpoint DFT x of k. And what I'd like to do is um, multiply x of n in the time domain by e to the j 2 pi m n over capital N. And the question is, what is the transform of that sequence? Uh, well, uh, what we'll do is we'll just plug into the definition So um, here's the signal that we're trying to compute the transform of Here's the complex exponential for the transform And we can put these things together in the obvious way And now we um, have come to the point uh, where we've, where I was just talking about a minute ago, where we have, I mean, what, what this looks like to us, we'd like to say, oh, this is the DFT evaluated at k minus m. 
I'm going to leave some space here. But uh, the problem with that is, just like our time domain sequence, our, our, the DFT can only be evaluated. Uh, in other words, this argument has to stay between 0 and capital N, minus 1. Just like our time domain sequence, it's only defined between 0 and capital N minus 1. So we run into problems here because what would happen if k is equal to 0 and the m that we chose was equal to 1? Then we would have, we'd be basically sitting here asking, what is, what is the value of the DFT at index negative 1? Well, index negative 1 doesn't exist. So how do we work ourselves out of this problem? Um, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is go back to the properties of the um, complex exponential. If What we're trying to do is find something that is equivalent to this um, complex exponential, but that will protect the value of k and keep it within the range 0 to n minus 1. And this form tells us how to do that. So borrowing from this, um, what we can do is we can write, uh, we can rewrite the above expression as a sum going from 0 to n minus 1, x of n e to the minus j 2 pi k minus m modulo n times little n, all that divided by n. So this tells us, um, uh, th this is good, we're making progress here because this piece in parentheses can never um, escape from the range 0 to n minus 1 because of the modulo. And so we can put that in here and just say that uh, this is k minus m modulo capital N. So we've seen a property like this before with the continuous time Fourier transform and with the discrete time Fourier transform. When in the time domain we multiply by a complex exponential, normally in the frequency domain we get a shift, uh, a frequency shift, where the shift in frequency is equal to the frequency of the complex exponential. With the DFT, it's a little bit different from that. When we multiply in the time domain by a complex exponential, we end up doing a circular shift in the frequency domain, in the DFT domain, um, but it's a circular shift, not a linear shift. Recall that um, if we had done this, uh, with the DFT, or the DTFT, this would have been x of f minus m over n. And um, here we'd never run into problems because this DTFT function is periodic. So if we shift this, um, I mean we, we can basically put any value of m in here that we want, even non-integers. Non -integers. But um, in the DFT case uh, we do have this restriction. First of all, m must be an integer for this to work out. And um, uh, we end up getting, instead of a linear shift, we get a circular shift. So anyway, it's a slightly different property. Um, the circularity here is really inherited from the periodicity of the DTFT because um, when we shift something off of the right hand side or shift something out of the right hand side of the, the basic interval between 0 and 1, we're shifting in um, something else from the left because of the periodicity of the function. But with the DFT that's not the case because the function is only defined for 0 to n minus 1 so we really do get a circular shift. Let's see if we can diagram out what a circular shift looks like um, using a table. So um, let's say, uh, let's build a table for a particular case, uh, k going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
So we'll take the case where n is equal to 6. And um, let's also use um, m equal 4. So here we're going to have the table, um, the column k minus m. So this would be negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. And now let's have another column in our table for k minus m modulo n. So we're going to take these numbers, modulo 6. So um, again, to do a modulo, we just add 6 to the negative numbers, and, and then we're going to be OK in this case. So we'll have 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1. So notice what happened. Um, if we do a circular shift, let's suppose we have a sequence x, or let's do this in the frequency domain, x of k. Let's suppose that that sequence is a, b, c, d, e, and f. If we do so then this will be k equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, if we uh, draw a picture of um, k minus 4 mod 6, um, the first sample is going to be the 2 index, so that will be c. And then we'll have the 3 index, d, 4, e, f, a, and b. Okay, so let's just see if this works out. So if we take this sequence and shift it to the right by four samples, so we'll go one, two, three, four, A ends up over here, B ends up one, two, three, four here, C ends up one, two, three, and then we run out of room to shift, and so we do a circular shift. Four, D is one, two, three, four, and um, F is one, two, three, four. So this is what a circular shift looks like. We're shifting by four samples to the right, but it ends up being a circular shift. And so some of the values actually shift back the other direction. So that's an example of the circular shift property. I'd like to, before we leave this, um, derive one other transform pair while we're looking at this property. And this is the uh, property where we take um, x, k, and we multiply in the frequency domain by e to the minus j 2 pi k times l divided by n. Um, that should transform back to something in the time domain. I'm not sure what it is. Let's calculate the inverse transform and see what happens. So we'll write down the inverse DTFT formula. k going from 0 to n minus 1. x k e to the minus j 2 pi k l over n e to the j 2 pi k n over capital N. So if we combine the complex exponentials, we have e to the j 2 pi k um, n minus l, all of that divided by n which is equal to so we can always put in a modulo n if wherever we need one or remove a modulo n wherever we need to and uh, this tells us that we now recognize that this is the the DFT or the this is just X evaluated at time n minus L modulo capital N so again if we multiply in the frequency domain by a complex exponential then in the time domain, we end up doing a circular time shift. 
Now, uh, one thing that I want to make clear uh, as we look at these properties, um, notice that the property has, has to do with, uh, let's, let's formally write down the property, x, n minus l modulo n transforms to x k e to the minus j 2 pi uh, let's see k l over n I think that's what we just derived um, what I, what I want to make you aware of here is that if you write e to the minus j 2 pi f naught um, let's see, I'm sorry. K N naught. Um, where, uh, in fact, we can even divide by N here. Uh, it would be interesting, we won't do this right now, but the thing I want to point out that if N naught is not an integer, then this property does not hold. In other words, um, we're not going to be able to shift, we're not going to be able to do a circular shift by a non-integer value. So with the DFT, there are some restrictions on these transforms that we just looked at. L has to be an integer. Also, in the other transform that we worked on, uh, the uh, this property, in this case, m has to be an integer in order for this um, circular shift property to work out because we can't shift by something that's not an integer.